It is time for us, those weekend golf guys. I would be John Ashton in studio. I've got no titles. I'm just here. Jeff Smith, co-host, Golf Magazine Top 100 teacher extraordinaire, hanging out the studio, the indoor golf studio at Edinburgh, Indiana's Timbergate Golf Course. Ready to I love go. Love the indoors, right? Still cold, oh. man. Still cold. Oh. It's it's still winter. Yeah, we got faked out last weekend, right? Everybody got a little taste of 60s and 70s, and we all just threw away our parkas and our sweatshirts, and we got out our golf clubs, and we demanded that that driving range be open. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mother Nature comes slapping us right in the face yet again That's with right. Guess what? It's still winter, boys. Yes. We had your little yeah. fake spring there. Uh, no uh, uh. That's right. <laughs> you don't get your luck. No way, pal. Get back inside, young man. So uh, young it's okay, man. because look, I got the indoor studio and I'm singing Did the praises you know. of indoor golf because I have not yet become a snowbird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, We've already talked about simulators. Indoor golf is getting to the point. The technology is getting to the point where, where you, you can emulate, simulate, and basically repeat what golf is like indoors or outdoors. Yeah, it's you really it's can't. Realistic. You really and, can. Look, look and, you can't create the lies, and you can't do the slopes, and you can't do the wind in your face, and you can't do the sunshine on your face. But you can do better. You can. And, and do better and than we, we were five years ago. We mentioned the last week in the show too is the vista when you actually get out to the first tee when the weather breaks. Yeah. Is amazingly wider. <laughs> you go, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I've been You're like, wait a like minute. Three square feet in front of me. Now I've got all this room. It's fantastic, <laughs> man. It's fantastic. So I hope you have access to uh, indoor stuff if you do not yet have the weather where you live to get outdoors. Uh, we're we're going to talk about pain. Pain, how to fix it, how to avoid it, how to play around it, how to play through it, how to play with it, how to play so you don't get it. How about how to play, play so you're not one of them either? <laughs> 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 out of that, place so you don't cause yourself any. That may be something we can't avoid. Uh, we're going to talk about that because you're going to hurt yourself, and we know it. Hang out. We'll be right back. And we are back, those weekend golf guys. Uh, thank you for voting last week, by the way. There was a flurry of last-minute voting. I we, love it. That. we do not yet know the results. The results are coming sometime in the next week, I believe. Does it have anything to do with sending them a check? No. Good. Strangely, if I asked, no, that doesn't help. <laughs> I was gonna say, shouldn't we be picking up a sponsor right about now? <laughs> oh, uh, am am I um out of line, or is today, or is was today the day we were supposed to set our clocks ahead? When do we do that? I don't. It's a weekend. I think it's got to. go. Oh, it could be today. Oh boy. Mm. <laughs> Well, maybe Remember. some of our listeners will notice if we're on at a different time and complain <laughs> on the Facebook page. Go, hey, I missed it. <laughs> Did we make it on time? <laughs> I was listening for you guys, and I your show watched. was late. Oh, <laughs> uh, crap. Um, all right, so you were talking about back pain. Is, is back pain the, the major? I, I know it affects a lot of the pros, but they play, you know, eight hours a day, seven days a week do a lot of stress and strain on their back, but do normal everyday weekend players still do it? I, I imagine we'd, we yeah. wouldn't be in this great shape. It would probably hurt even worse, wouldn't it? Try to imagine, right? Just the, the scourge of, of back pain that happens as a result of continuous bad golf. Yeah. Not good golf, the kind that's good for your body. But bad golf, the kind that's bad for your body. Normally, we talk about good golf and bad golf as terms of quality of play and yeah. ball flight and judging right. it on how many golf balls you lose or find, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. But today, we're talking about it on a little bit different scale, right? We're talking about longevity. We're talking about health. We're talking about, you know, what, what do you go in through all the time, right? So let's think. 
What do you think causes a lot of back pain? I mean, sure, there's body rotation. There's torquing of the body doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Hips doing one thing, chest doing it at a little different time. You know, the twisting of the body and the lower and the upper. Can you imagine, John, if the lower body was, say, stabilized and the upper body was trying to rotate above it? You know, so all those people out there who do the cement shoes scenario, right? Mm -hmm. You've seen these guys. Yep. Plant. Looks like they got the heaviest legs on the planet, right? Boom. They're not going any place. And what do we got? We got them trying to swing a club and turn their chest on top of that lower body. Guess what pays the, the, the price? The back. The lower back, yeah. So we're talking about a lot of that stuff muscularly. It's hard, right? And and that's doing it right. So is that really doing it right? Is, is it? that really? So think, if your upper is trying to move against the wishes of the lower... It doesn't sound like it can be right, does it? No, it doesn't. Uh-uh. Seems like it's all got to be in motion, in flow. Start to use those hip joints instead. Could you imagine a golfer who could, say, pivot using the hips as the pivot points? Twisty hips, right? Okay. Think of, uh, think of doing, the, doing the twist. We get a little Chuck Berry going, right? Chubby just, checker. Huh? Chubby, chubby checker. checker. Yeah, do the tub, chubby checker. Yeah. <laughs> so what if we stuck a, a club across your thighs, John, and you held that club on your thighs with your hands? And then I said, okay, start to pivot back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You couldn't pivot your upper without pivoting your lower. And then you'd realize what you what joints you were using. Your knees would give way. Your ankles mm -hmm. would roll. Right. But your hip joints would be the ones we'd be using. Right. Yeah. That would be good golf. Now it's it good on more? your body, but yet it's good in motion too, because you had asked earlier about the stationary, non-moving lower body mm -hmm. and then the upper body doing its job against the wishes. And you said, isn't that good golf? No, that's bad golf in bad, all bad, ways. Bad, in bad. all ways, right? Think yeah. about that. You're asking your upper body and arms to do all of the work, so it can't be more powerful. That's right, because your legs need to be your yeah. legs are where the power comes from, man. Eh? Uh huh. All right. Now let's let's think a little bit. If only half of your body is doing the job, can it be the most powerful possible move? Of course not. No. And I, I got to no. admit, first off, I wasn't wrong. It was just I was looking up when daylight savings time started. I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's an attempt at a save. And it, and it is today, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it is today. Yeah. <laughs> wonder why my – look, I'm just using my phone, and my phone does it automatically. So I don't know, man. Yeah, I pay no attention. <laughs> right. So – Let's think about that other part of we think, well, wait a minute. I was taught to do that. Right? I'm sorry if you were. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for your pain. And I'm sorry that they, they caused you that pain. And you have now my permission to go back to whoever taught you that and punch them. <laughs> and give them the all, the chiropractor, all the chiropractor bills. Oh, yeah. They're, they are very happy about that, right? Yeah. So when you look at the the thing in, in playing golf, I want you to do yourself a favor, everybody out there, go look at golfers on television and ask yourself a question. Do they keep any body part, legs, head, any of that? Do they keep any body part anywhere throughout the entire golf swing? Try to imagine your favorite golfer right now and they're on television, and you've seen their golf swing, do they keep any body part anywhere? Do they keep it there, or is it moving? Yeah, there are no Answer. body parts stationary in a no. swing. No. No. 
But all those folks out there trying to do said thing, like stay down on it, keep their head down, keep their feet planted in the ground, something along those lines, right? Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. not gaining anything except lousy golf as defined by everything in golf and also pain. Because your body's not in complete flow. You're locking down a piece of it, making everything else move around it. So you think about the joints that are pivoting at that moment when half of it's not and the other half is, is the pivot joint always gets worn out. Except if we use our hips because they're ball joints. Okay. Right? Think about that. They just are meant to go any different direction, right? Yeah. Right? So we use our hips better. We have less back pain. Lots less back pain. So you would you start the swing with a movement of your hips? A lot of times people start it with a movement of the upper and then followed by the lower. Okay. As long as like they swing the arms and the chest then turns and then the hips turn and then the knees give and the ankles roll. Right. Okay. On the way back, mm -hmm. on the way down, it's not exactly the opposite, but it ain't far off. Right. There is. The feet going back down, the knees doing their job, the hips rotating, the chest rotating after that, the arms coming down and the wrists unhinging in that sort of order. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, the order the order is kind of automatic. Again, go go listen to last week's show. You don't have time to think about all that stuff. No. It's just gonna happen. Nobody so, got time for that. Yeah. So you have to uh practice the, the whole deal a little bit i know yeah. you know what's interesting john you know what practices this whole thing that sequence that won't hurt your back no that sequence that puts all the body parts in order no swing a rope oh okay swing a rope because everything has to flow in order to get that soft handle and soft bodied rope back up around you slap yourself in the back you have to undo it it has to be that motion Swing huh. a rope. Well, let's uh, let's get a rope. You get a line, I'll get a pole. You get a rope. <laughs> That's right. One one of the one of the many many things uh, you can use to practice golf that costs a grand total of about a buck and a half. You don't have to go out and get one of those hundred and fifty dollar practice clubs that clicks at the bottom of the swing to make sure you're doing it right. You know. But you know, those are very helpful. Oh, they Those are things that are one hundred fifty dollars, and they click at the bottom of your swing. Yeah, if you oh, want, really helpful. If you got an extra hundred and a half, then you know, by all yeah, means, go buy around. one. But if you don't, then you know, head down to the uh, big, the big home repair store and buy about right. an eight foot long piece of rope. We'll be right back. We are those weekend golf guys, and we are back. And see, your back pain is better already. Right. Look. What a miraculous thing it is just listening to us those weekend golf guys, huh? You know, look, let's just let's just wrap that up for a second. Sure. Allow the body to move, right? No uh -huh. lock joints, no heads planted in the ground, no feet planted in the ground, no locked joints. Yeah. Let's avoid injury, folks. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no so keep as your I talk head about this uh, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, so as I talk about this rope, we finished up with the rope. So here's what mm -hmm. you want. Make it kind of a medium weight rope. Right. Make it about as go get something that's about as big around as your thumb in diameter. Go get yourself about eight feet of that thing. Fold it in half. Get yourself about a, you know, a, a doubled over kind of a thing. So it's about hip high, you know, as you're holding on to it. About the total length would be about hip high. Mm -hmm. And then just grab a handle of it, you know, maybe put some tape on it or something. I do that. Dig to get some of that gorilla tape and I put it around the end. So I've got a handle. Right. Mm hmm. And um, just start swinging. Let it slap you in the back on the way back and let it go all the way through. But, man, you should use your whole body. Get used to using the whole thing. And all of a sudden, all body points are uh, body parts are working. All the joints are being used. The sequence of events in your body, the lower happens, then the upper happens, then the arms, then the hands. All that works in great flow, and it synchronizes your golf swing. But it also frees you up. You don't get hurt. That's the important and the operative consideration. Let me ask you, however, because yeah. I would think even doing that, if you weren't prepared by getting the muscles prepared, warmed up a little bit, you could still hurt yourself. 
you need you oh, need sure. to actually kind of stretch and stuff like that. Even if you're just going to yeah. sit in the, in the backyard and swing a rope around for a while, you need to oh, get yeah. ready, right? Of course. So you know, here comes the disclaimer portion of the show, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> We're none of us are medical professionals here on this show, but right. and we don't pretend to be. But we do know this: every time you're going to do anything physical, you, you need to warm up. There, that's the disclaimer. There we go. Yeah. So as we're talking about back pain, don't we have to talk about putting? Well, I was going to say one of the things that causes back pain is some of the strange contorted positions people get in when they when they yeah. play golf. And yeah. and putting seems to be the one time when when you've got the strangest positions with people with the club over the ball. You do. I've seen some crazy things, right? Look, we all Harking back to the days of Michelle Wee being bent over, what, 90 degrees almost, right? <laughs> like, that's got to be back pain going on there, right? Yeah, yeah. But th- certainly for every person, there's an angle of their posture from their their spine tilting above their hip joints that starts to put strain on the muscles going up and down the spine in the back and mm-hmm. up near in the upper back between the shoulders. right. There's an angle there for everybody that causes a little bit of discomfort. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, it goes along with how strong the person's back muscles are and how heavy their chest is. And can they really bend over that way and practice putting at that angle for a very long time? So sometimes you see people and they're bent over a lot and then they just are no good at practicing putting because they put themselves in a position that they really don't want to be in for a long time. So mm-hmm. then they give up on the, a lot of putting practice. It contributes to the, I'm no good thing because I don't want to practice because it hurts my back to putt that way. My question right. is, why aren't you standing at a posture that your back can handle? And the answer to that is, well, I still have to be able to see my line, right? I have to bend over mm-hmm. a certain amount sure. to it's see the line, to aim mm-hmm. the face. Sure. So we've got to deal with those issues as, so what we do is we go find out what good postures that we can stand in, that we can see the line. And if your putter doesn't match, get it to match. Maybe bend it a bit more upright, maybe bend it a bit flatter, maybe make it a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Not many people need to make it shorter, but they do, right? Some do. Is there an optimum position for everybody or is it the same position that's optimum for everybody? No, there's an optimum position for each and every human being. Okay. Right? We all have different backs. We all have different muscle structures. We all have different weights. We all have different uh, eyesight on where we need to tilt and get close to the ball or get farther from the ball in order to see it. But sometimes I think, John, that we go about this in, I like this putter, I'm going to buy this putter, and then I will adapt me to the putter Yeah. because I want this putter. And then next thing you know, we don't you know, it might cause a sore back or it might, we might have to tweak this or tweak that just to see the, the target line. So I think that in go about it, the better way is go about somebody who can fit you better for a putter. Mm -hmm. And then all the time, if you find out if, if you like the putter looking at it, if it helps you see the line, if you get the right distance from your ball and the right posture, your body will tell you, Hey, I can putt in this posture for quite some time, then you stand to chance at actually being good at putting without hurting your back. It, it comes down to, I think a recurring theme we've had here for the past couple of months is that buying things because of the aesthetics or because you saw your favorite pro win with it last week, or, uh, you've always liked that particular brand or it's cheap, it's you, whatever are not reasons to buy any piece of golf equipment. It's like, it's like clothes. You don't buy it off the rack from Walmart. You, if you really want it to look good and to fit, you go to a tailor. Yeah, that's right. And the tailor is going to be more expensive than Walmart to buy clothes and getting golf clubs fit may or may not be more expensive because some of the big box stores offer fitting at no additional charge. Do they not? Well, and, and, but you know, you, you're not sure of the quality of the fitting, you, you got to find out, you know, if you're going to go to get club fit, just like if you went to a tailor, mm-hmm. 
you want to go to somebody who's got an expertise in that. Right. Because there's a lot of people who do it that doesn't make them good. So what you have to do is, you know, if you're going to the big box store and you're going to do that and you're going to get fit by one of their people, you need to make sure that one of their people actually has credentials and that they actually are quality as fit because they could call anybody, somebody a fitter. That's all. That's true. Yeah, you get a business card cut up, just put the title fitter on it and people believe it. What about those fitting situations they do at golf courses when the, the manufacturer itself comes out? Because I know I got from my club up the street here. I got to notice that, you know, next Tuesday, Callaway will be there between two and six. And next Wednesday, Titleist will be there between two and six. And then Mizuno comes in on Thursday. Yeah. Um, is, is it, is it that they would fit you for their stuff? Oh yeah. That's exactly what that is. So you, They're you sure may not going to fit you for somebody else's stuff. No, but, and that's, and that's, I guess, if you go to an independent fitter, you're going to have the gamut of everything that's available. Cause like when I got my driver fit to me, I mean, it's a Callaway driver, right? But yeah. it was one of five different manufacturers that we tried. And this is the one that worked the best. But if I went to a Callaway fitting, it would be which Callaway driver worked best for me, right? Exactly. And so this is the this is the thing. So you want somebody who's, you know, got the reputation for it that's somewhat brand agnostic. I'm not sure okay. if agnostic is truly the right term, but it gets used in this sense. So I think contextually it's correct. Yes. Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. As in they're not tied to some company emotionally or financially. <laughs> right. <laughs> Meaning they're not they're not making a commission off how many sets they sell that day. Yeah, and and that's the, those are the kind of things you want to pay for services that get you honest answers, and you know that that's important. Yeah, the fitting the whole fitting idea is I guess you go to an independent guy uh, to get to get fitted or to get fat or whatever the past tense of fit is, and. Um, I think that's an interesting question right there. <laughs> Do I want to be fat? That means I've been fitted. <laughs> uh, but 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 that gets back to to position. Um, let's talk putters specifically. You really need to sit because because we you and I have done this. You've got that nifty little bowling alley looking thing in yeah. your indoor studio uh, for, for the putting stuff. And the I found just raising up a little bit, because you told me I was hunched over too much. You were. And raising up just a little bit was phenomenally a phenomenal improvement over being able to see the line and follow the line. Well, because when you tilt down, you're moving your eye line closer to the golf ball. When you raise up, you're moving it farther but it affects your posture and your arm hang and it affects your ability to, you know, move your upper body. And it also affects your balance and it affects your lower back. Yeah. So there's lots of things that changing your posture up or down or forward or back can do. And that's something else that you kind of need to do in front of somebody who knows what they're doing. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, that's not an adjustment that we're really qualified to make on our own, is it? It's pretty tough, but you know, there are some pretty simple rules about that. Okay. If you can see the line from the position you're in, you could do a quick measurement of how far your eyes are from that line, regardless of how high. Okay. By essentially dropping a ball off the bridge of your nose and see where it hits the ground relative to that line huh. and get an okay. idea of that. Right. Yeah. So that you will know where over the line you are exactly. Okay. Uh huh. And do, and it's simple yes or no, and we'll get into it in the next segment too, but do your eyes have to be directly over the line in order to be effective butter? No, they do Good. not. 
good. Amen. Because I couldn't do that to save my life. <laughs> we will delve into that and, and some other aspects of how to be comfortable. Because if you're putting and you have to put your hand on the small of your back to help yourself stand up after you've putt, you know you're doing it wrong. We are those weekend golf guys, and we'll be right back. And I told you we'd be right back, and lo and behold, here we are. I'm John Ashton in studio. He's Jeff Smith to Golf Cave, Edinburgh, Indiana's Timbergate Golf Course. We're talking don't hurt this year. No. You know? Don't hurt. You know what? I don't want to have my golf game be sponsored by ibuprofen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm, I'm going to ask you a question that's probably going to make sure that we, we – tick off a bunch of sponsors that'll never come back but do do are there clothing is there clothing are there pieces of clothes i don't know how to say that i don't my it's i lost an hour then and my mind is just totally frazzled um <laughs> well like like the copper infused undershirts and things like that are there are there pieces of clothing that help not hurt when you're playing golf Boy. Okay, so that copper infused stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, oh, let's call it anecdotal evidence. Okay. Done by people who were given the product to say nice things about it. Okay. <laughs> or given money to say nice things about it <laughs> that have been said, right? That they've had things said about them that have no other way of measuring whether they were effective or not. Right. I, I don't think so. Yeah. But Hey, I, I probably put it down to the category of it couldn't hurt. You it know? couldn't hurt. Right? Is it going to help? Probably not, but is it going to hurt you? Yeah. Unless it, it gives you a false sense of security. So you figure you can, you can take a bad position and still not hurt. Right. You know, you still have to do it right. You know, so I still don't know about the clothing helping any pain. I don't. Yeah. I do know this, though. I have found, and I'm not one of these paid spokespeople for this product altogether, but there seem to be a growing trend in socks. Mm -hmm. that everybody's got these elastic middle section of the sock that helps your arches of your feet. Oh, really? Lots of socks all over the market, whatever the brand they always seem to have this compression sleeve, so to think, right? They're mm -hmm. a little like an elastic middle section that helps the arches of your feet. Let me tell you, I've been on a lot of planes and they sell these compression sleeve socks and they have that in them. And you know what it helps with? Circulation. Circulation. Mm -hmm. It does. Because you can sit down for hours on an uncomfortable plane seat and get up and your legs don't hurt so bad anymore. Ah, okay. So as we're talking about clothing, that may be the one thing that I might say to people, you might check that out and see if those kinds of socks, whatever brand they happen to be that have those, let's say, elastic sort of middle of the foot section that helps you with your arch support, because I stand on my feet all day. And I wear socks like that, and it okay. helps. Huh. Okay. So I could that affect golf performance? Sure, mm -hmm. it could. I've got no other evidence other than my brain saying, look, my feet don't hurt as much. Right. When I sit down for a long time on my legs to feel better, I would imagine, because I have no other way of knowing, that right. that would actually help in any kind of performance. Okay. I would imagine also that, you know, if, if you have weak ankles, maybe an ankle brace prior sure. to playing. Right. Um, same thing with knee braces. You know, uh, I've seen like bowlers have these funky little things that, that keep their wrists in the proper position. Yeah, so it doesn't let their wrist collapse with a 16-pound ball in their hand. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I guess that there are accoutrements that sure. would help help your golf game. I know I say I, that I, word I, again. Accoutrement. Wow, ah, there we go. Ha, ha, ha. It's the French <laughs> French, you know. Ha, ha. 
who says this show doesn't have any culture? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can name you about 17 people who have said it just this week. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I have played with a lot of people and I started doing a knee brace because my knee, even, even using it correctly, my knee hurts. It's yeah. not that I'm doing it wrong. It's just that my knee is old. <laughs> it's just like, I really, it's not that I don't feel like moving in that direction. It's just, I don't feel like moving at all, John. So, <laughs> but the knee brace helps uh, alleviate any pain and also to, to keep it from uh, making me, make, making me want to not turn fully. Because right. that's the problem when it hurts is you just don't do it right, hoping that you'll you won't make it hurt any worse. Well, you know? you know, as we talk about different ways of making sure we're not hurting, right? We kind of have to talk about elbows and wrists and shoulders too, don't we? Yes, we do. So you know, here we are in this 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 uh, how not to be in pain thing, right? So. Right. People stress so much. They squeeze the club so much, and then they hit something with their with their tension on their hand and their arm so much that they wind up getting elbow pain. Mm -hmm. Tennis elbow, they call it golfer's elbow. And then they sell these little things you strap around your forearm and it has a little air bladder thing on it. Right. They call it an air cast, and it's really nothing more than it squeezes the muscles and alleviates the tendon pain. Pain. All caused by too tight of a grip. Tension. Yeah. 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 So and we that, probably ought to <laughs> combine that too tight of a grip <laughs> with your ball with a, with a bad swing. Away from you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> where you hit the ground instead of the ball. That hurts. Now that's where you get your wrist pain. <laughs> yeah. You know, whether you got graphite shafts or not. That is going right up to that first joint right there in the fingers and the yep. wrists yep. and the elbows. Yeah. We got those things. And, and so I, I, those, those are, are basically after the pain fix kind of thing. Like you just mentioned, or yeah. does that stop? Can you still, if you wear that air cast thing, does that stop the pain even though you're still gripping it too tight? I don't know. I've really, I've seen some people who have that on in my career, right? Mm -hmm. And I make note of it, but I don't see anybody who tells me who has it, they're on. They don't go up and give me that evangelical talk like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing I've ever done. And ever since I've worn this, I've not had any pain. They yeah. don't say those things. So I don't really know if it alleviates anything or not. Yeah. I really don't know. You were talking about being sponsored by uh, ibuprofen earlier. How many how many people have we played golf with that do not carry a bottle of ibuprofen in their bag? I don't. Think um, I don't. Young people. <laughs> you <want that>? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> young people. Yeah. yeah, it's it. People think that muscle pain joint pain is just a natural result of playing golf but we're here to tell you that it's not if you do it right yeah that's right it it doesn't have to be painful you know if you use your body wisely mm -hmm. if you don't squeeze the club and you don't plant your feet into the ground or try to keep your face planted in the ground and restrict movement. It seems to be the theme of this whole thing is if you restrict movement in some way, something's going to wind up being hurt and it's bad mm -hmm. golf. Yeah. I right. mean, just look, look, we, we oftentimes repeat the, the warning. Don't try to imitate the pros because yeah. They're very, very good. But look at how fluid their body motion is and how effortless it looks. I mean, look at Ernie Els, the way he swings. It's just there's Fred Couples who has a bad back. But just look at how 
smooth everything is. Everything's moving. Everything's moving in concert with everything else. And it looks effortless. And, and then you see us sitting there and we wiggle down and, and look like some baseball player digging in at the plate. And then swing and grunt like some tennis player with a backhand somewhere. Yeah. I mean, that stuff is all unnecessary in this game. But, you know, here's the thing. Everybody, you know, they want to hit it so far. Yeah. And so they use everything. Look, they're coming to me because I can help them produce power as well as accuracy, as well as fun. But when the average person comes and starts to talk about, I want to gain more distance, I want to gain more distance, I want to gain more distance, and they go about it in that method that you just mentioned, the grunting, the stressing, the kind of mm -hmm. let's go try to push a truck kind of emotion. Right. Not only does that not work, slows the club head down, messes up the landing spot, but it also causes injury. Mm -hmm. But our natural tendency is to put forth more effort, which in most people's minds is putting forth more energy as right. opposed to understanding that all we need to do is create a faster moving club in a circle. Mm -hmm. How do we speed the club head up is by making the center of it go faster at some point. Right. 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 Not more thrusting, grunting, let's go push a truck kind of force. It doesn't work that way, but people have that tendency. So one of the things that I, try to give people the perspective on is the average person who comes to me and says he needs more club head speed is that one of the first things I talk to him about are his limitations as a person that he doesn't want to hear about. Like, Hey, guess what? You're only five foot eight. Mm -hmm. Your wingspan is also only five foot eight. Guess what? Your swing arc is limited. Yeah. Anybody who's six foot can hit it past you. And they're like, yeah, I know. I, all my friends are hitting it past me. I'm like, okay, so let's understand that there is a limitation because you're also not willing to go to the gym as evidenced by what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> Whoops. I can get by with saying that as a conversation on the radio. I'd never try to say that to one of my students. But the point is, is I tell them, look, you don't have the ability in your life up to this point to change your life so much that you will go spend so much time in the gym trying to create this size of body to be much more powerful than what it is. For example, if we were to try to figure out how much these PGA Tour players could actually squat and bench press and deadlift and push and curl and do all these things, mm -hmm. the normal human being would realize that these PGA tour players are not normal human beings. Right. Yeah. But they, but since they're not built like NFL football players, they don't appear to be that great a strength and that great a shape. They appear to be the normal human being wearing the same clothing that the golfers can go out and buy. Right. <laughs> I look just like tiger. No, you don't. <laughs> Go take off your shirt and get down to your skivvies and go take a look at Tiger and mm -hmm. ask yourself, are you two anywhere remotely the same athlete? Yeah, it's not it's not black pants and a red shirt that make you look yeah. like Tiger. Let me tell you. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're you're delusional at best at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and I, I honestly, I wish there were some sort of, you know, some of these athletes that are trainers, right. That, that are going to trainers. If, if that wasn't proprietary information, like Tiger Woods can bench press X and he can squat X and he can do this lunge and that jump and that thing at these levels. <clears throat> if that information was actually available for, for consumption, like how fast they swing a club is available for consumption. Mm -hmm. how, what's their club hit speed? What's their ball speed? All those things are available. That's what they're producing. Right. Right. But, they, but the, the stuff that's not available is other stuff that they can produce, like 
the amount of money they produce is kind of available, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but but not the weights that they push. Yeah. And they've trained their bodies to be that big and strong. That's not readily available. And because it's not, it's hard to give the average Joe perspective on why the average Joe can't get there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication, and a lot of gym time. Uh, next week, I think maybe we should uh, bring on a golf fitness person to talk to us about mm -hmm. how to get to that point. And we will do that. Next I know week. a guy. Golf fitness right here with those weekend golf guys. Uh, whoop. You okay? Yep. Good. It's, it's us. We're back. Those weekend golf guys. I'm Sam Ashton. He is Jeff Smith. Uh, don't hurt. I mean, that's, this is it. An entire hour we have just given you an idea of how not to hurt. And the, the bottom line is, as Jeff said, don't make anything static. Yeah, it's really hard to make things moving. static and make things not hurt. Yeah, just keep everything moving. And warm up beforehand, stretch a little bit, get, get everything ready. Because it is an athletic move that you make when you swing a golf club. It, it most definitely is. And it's a complex athletic move, even though my job, as I talk to the masses on this show and I talk to my students in person, is to make it sound like it's a simple, easy thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's this blending of the truth and the depth of there's more truth in it. How do I make something complex sound simple? That's, that's yeah. a difficult job. Uh, but you do it, and that's why you're one of Golf Magazine's top 100 teachers, and you do it well. So, uh, you know, you can always uh, approach Jeff online, send him an email. Uh, he can do he can do long-distance video lessons. I do that. He does that. From, from people all over the world, I have people that I'm doing, you know, Zoom lessons with. They've got their... Their thing is in front of them on the range and my thing's in front of my face and we have electronics in between us and yet we're working on their golf game, making it better. Yeah, it can be done. And what would that, how, how do they get in touch with you? What's the email address? All they got to do is send me an email, uh, you know, at jeff at jeffsmithgolfinstruction.com. Really okay. simple. That is really simple. And uh, and he can he can work with you. He can talk to you. you. You don't have to be standing in front of him. In fact, it's probably better not to be standing in front of him. Because when he gets when he gets that that I'm right in front of you friendly, we're we're kind of he he tends to get a little mean. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's just with you. Well, that's just me. <laughs> just with you. <laughs> okay. All the rest of the people are going. Wow, he told me the truth with a smile on his face. He likes me. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, but we're getting there. You know, today daylight savings time happened and it goes all the way through November. So you've got a lot of daylight now. Hopefully we'll have some warmth here pretty soon and the uh, mud and the muck will evaporate and it'll become nice to, uh, to, to hang out in the pastoral verdant splendor of your favorite local golf course. Yeah. Listen to you. I know. Listen to you. I am waxing poetic. Man. Wow. I wax on, I wax off. How about that? Yeah. Uh, it, it, whether you want to do it poetically or whatever, just don't hurt, but go out and play some golf. <laughs> <laughs>